Excellent, dear Edgar, excellent reflections, excellent food for thought. Food is a critical uh, word right now because we are officially in coffee break. So um, we have to see how to arrange. But please give us five more minutes because I really would like to have two things uh, still done in this to conclude this panel. First, Parks, there was some, some different perspective on the deal striking uh, with regards I thought it was a investment. frontal attack. It was, <laughs> right? I, I, I was trying to be diplomatic, sorry. Um, so maybe, maybe this would be interesting to, to respond to this, uh, and certainly this will be then taken into the coffee break as a discussion amongst many of us. Um, but then I would like to conclude by everybody uh, with a very short statement out of what we heard, and maybe we have um, kind of widened our horizon on governance um, challenges uh, with sustainable urbanization. So maybe you then could conclude in a minute, uh, everybody, to say, so what is, what is it what, would, what you go, would give as a policy description, policy advice to maybe local authorities, local governments, what should they do differently or maybe as well continue to be doing in order to get the complexity between diversity um, and complexity straight, yeah. Um, so Parks, first of all, up to you. What would you respond to this direct confrontation? Well, well, firstly to say I've never shared a platform with Edgar and would disagree. <laughs> um, I, I think that one of the most fundamental issues that African cities confront is the lack of access to the requisite resources to invest in the needs to transform our cities and to respond to the development challenges in our cities. And part of this reality is the inadequacy of our local revenue generation systems, the inadequacy of national transfers, uh, the inadequacy of access to capital development funds, and a whole range of issues that inhibit cities from driving the policy direction they wish to drive. So the question becomes, as we design our cities and respond to our challenges, who then makes the decisions about what needs to be invested in? And my contention is that if city governments are at the leadership of at least providing some of these ideas and saying, whether it's in mobility, it's in housing, it's in infrastructure, water sanitation, whether it's in sustainability, if cities provide those solutions and say, these are the things that the economy, the people, um, and the institutions, the civic infrastructure needed in my city. And therefore, I am able to develop the necessary products that can be invested in. Then you've got somewhere to go. It's a lot more difficult to plan if you can't execute. And it will be impossible to execute if you don't have the resources. So you do need to ensure that we're able to crowd in the appropriate investments and that city leadership is partly driving the nature of invest investments that we're trying to bring into our cities. The nature of those investments are subject to city leadership. I, I've engaged with many city leaders who are extremely ambitious, extremely determined to make a change to what happens in their cities, but their hands are tied. They either don't have the regulatory mechanisms or the financial resources to do the work, and we need to ensure that we create the platforms to ensure that they are able to invest in the infrastructure that they need. But Parks, can I ask you, I mean, apart from the issue of raising funds and capitals and, uh, and, and the risk, as Edgar put, getting the wrong capital, huh? do you think, given your role at the head of UCLG, which is basically the United Nations of Cities, that in the parts of the world that we're talking about, cities have enough power the city leadership has enough power to actually deliver some of the things we're talking about. Because it seems to us from our work that part of the issue is not even the intent, is that the decisions are taken elsewhere, and often at another level, state level, uh, national level, etc. What's your view on that? So certainly not. Um, I do not think that particularly in Africa our cities have the necessary authority. You do have instances where they do have their authority. And part of the work that we're now trying to do at UCLG is to actually 
determine the extent to which transformation can be driven, or at least to juxtapose where cities have authority, the extent to which they are able to lead the transformation in their respective cities, and how that is inhibited by the lack of authority. So I do think that the matter of decentralization, not just political decentralization, but political, administrative, and fiscal decentralization is important so that you have the tools at your disposal to invest in driving the city to the direction that you think it should take. Uh, I think two things. Uh, one is, uh, as I said earlier, Africa is urbanizing. Urbanization is coming. And as I said, uh, no country in the world uh, has become middle income without urbanization. Urbanization is an opportunity. And we have to be able really to, to seize this opportunity. I think when you look at most of African cities, they are maturing. They are not really matured. So we have a chance. This is a one-time chance that we can get. We have a chance really to seize this opportunity and manage the cities by fixing things that are going wrong. Of course, if cities are built already, if they are matured, it will be difficult uh, to change that. So that's what I would say. Now my, I would like just to make a point to say that um, while all the questions that we have put um, on the table during this discussion are important, I think it is very important to look at the human beings who are in the city, the majority of the people who live in the cities, and how do we make our cities inclusive to the needs and aspirations of those groups. And, uh, and I think the young population in our continent today is an important group, and I think they need to have a seat at the table. Uh, they have a lot of difficulties, they're facing a lot of difficulties, but in planning, in governance, in budgeting, we need to find inclusive ways of bringing in the majority of city dwellers into it, because I don't think we will have, have effective cities if there is no kind of democratic, inclusive uh, processes that um, help make the cities livable for those who inhabit them. Thank you. Um, advice for city governments, that's the question. Um, I, I think for me, the what I would say is really invest in, in mechanisms for transparency and accountability because it achieves two things. Paradoxically, uh, greater transparency radically improves the performance of the public sector. And secondly, because that then catalyzes legitimacy, you crowd in goodwill and additional resources and contributions from civil society and the private sector. So if you want in a, in a low finance environment or lack of resource environment, for me an investment in transparency and accountability is the key. I think the scene has been set. We have clear now the what, we have a little bit clear the, the how, but I think the crucial question is the who. So I'm looking forward into the debates of this one and a half days left to this conference. Thank you very much, big round of applause for the contributors.